Narancha's battle with Formaggio comes to an epic close, and Bruno and his boys get their very first order from the boss. This episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind was guest directed by Michael Bay because there were a lot of fucking explosions. Are you guys ready to talk about an epic episode of JoJo? Because that's exactly what we got in this episode right here. We got to see Narancha's concluding battle with Formaggio, which was incredibly exciting, action-packed, and always features that great JoJo twist that every single episode always manages to deliver. But on top of all of that, we actually got Narancha's backstory. And big shock! It's very freaking depressing. The end of the episode also gave us a very fantastic tease, which is getting me incredibly excited for the next major arc of the series to see where all of these other assassins are coming from and how it's going to get us this much closer to learning the true identity of the leader, the boss of Passione. At the age of 10, Narancha's mother passed away due to some weird degenerative eye disease. They never really get into what this is or what it could possibly be, but you just have to accept the fact that when he was a little kid, his mother died and he was left with his father. And Narancha Narancha's dad really didn't give a shit about anything. Hell, I don't even think he spoke a single word in this episode, which is really driving home the fact that he doesn't care about his son or his family, and after his wife died, he basically became a completely different person, or at least that's the implication. It's also sort of implied that he never really had much of a relationship with his father anyway, and that's not really a big point here. Thing is, after the death of his mother, this was sort of the turning point for Narancha. He decided to go off on his own, joining gangs, stealing food, acting than like Aladdin. Only thing missing is a catchy musical number and a little monkey sidekick. However, Narancha's brand new life of crime does not really serve him all that well, as it's not too long before he's thrown in jail for an entire year. All because he ended up taking the fall for one of his friends, and he was actually tricked into doing this. One of his older thief friends actually claimed that Narancha should dye his hair blonde. The reason he did this is because he himself is blonde, and he needed someone to be a scapegoat, a decoy for him. And of course, Narancha ends up getting picked up by the police, having the shit beaten out of him, and thrown into to jail for a full year, and he's constantly beaten by the guards during this time where he ends up getting an infected eye. Very similar to his mother. This causes him to go into a dark hole where he believes it's only a matter of time before he dies just like his mother, and it was simply just a part of his destiny. Even his friends dismiss him over the fear that they might get infected by his weird eye disease. With friends like that, who needs enemies? So Narancha is basically just there dying in the streets and the alleys of Italy when suddenly he's found by Fugo, who is already a part of Bruno Bucciarati's gang, and he decides to just randomly bring him into Bruno's restaurant, where Bruno ends up giving him some food and even putting him in the hospital and getting rid of that weird eye disease. Of course, Narancha is completely enamored by Bruno and his absolute fabulousness, and this prompts him to ask if he can actually join his gang, to which Bruno says, fuck you, go to school, Drink your school, stay in drugs, and don't do milk. You know, I just realized while referencing Mr. T there that Mr. T might as well be a JoJo character in the real world. Naracha ends up taking the advice of Bruno, but it's not long until he decides that he still wants to work for him, realizing that while Bruno was mad at that moment, he realized that he was actually looking out for him the entire time. It's love that he never really felt before, something that he completely forgot from the love of his mother. And he actually decides to go behind Bruno's back and actually ends up meeting Polpo, where he goes through the entire lighter test, gets his stand abilities, and officially joins the organization, before eventually teaming up with Bruno, where we we are at the story today. This backstory is honestly pretty solid. It seems like they're omitting certain details, maybe to hide something for later, or maybe they're really just not worth mentioning. What I will say is that the backstory of all of the different members of Bruno's gang have all been really interesting so far and allow me to look at these characters in a completely different light, aside from the fact that they're basically your stereotypical goons who like to jut out their jaw. But let's get to the battle with Little Feet and Formaggio, which actually wraps up surprisingly quickly, but uh, actually really has a lot of great things going for it. Like the fact that Formaggio tries to trap Narancha in a bottle with a spider, which is just going to completely destroy him and suck out all of his bodily fluids. But this is JoJo. Things don't always go the way that you're going to expect, and there's always going to be some sort of a twist. Right as is about to go into the bottle, he suddenly starts firing wildly with Aerosmith, and he seems to completely miss. Actually, 
actually he was aiming for the car which is right next to them he was actually aiming for the gas tank hoping that a big explosion was going to go off and guess what it does and it absolutely fries the fuck out of formaggio he gets completely anakin skywalkered on the sidewalk and it is pretty freaking great and unlike a lot of other anime series where a character gets hit with like a big blast of fire he actually does get really fucked up and burned by it to the point where there's actually a little bit of censorship in this episode but eventually you end up seeing this nasty looking dude half of his face completely burnt pulling off the whole two-face look what's really great about this scene though is that he actually made manages to temporarily escape by putting out the fire with his blood. What he actually ends up doing is that he slits his wrists, which seems like a really bad idea to be perfectly honest, and all this blood starts exploding out and then he suddenly shrinks, allowing himself to get cover covered in blood and to douse the flames and to make a quick escape. This is when Narancha just reveals how crazy he truly is. He knows that he's probably not going to be able to capture this guy as it is revealed that his stand actually goes after carbon dioxide and now there's a giant freaking flaming car in the middle of the street so that's like obscuring everything so he decides you know what fuck it I'm just gonna burn this bitch to the ground and he decides to just start firing at all of these cars creating all of these massive explosions which eventually does reveal for Maggio and they have one big final standoff to see who is the fastest who's got the slickest guns in the west guess what it's Narancha. He ends up just outspeeding him in the coolest way possible. He does that thing that he does in the intro where the train actually like flies uh, behind his arms and he like creates kind of like a runway with it. It's pretty fucking awesome. It's a really great standoff and a fantastic moment for Narancha. And the overall image of him standing there with this entire Italian street on fire is just so incredibly insane. The episode ends with Narancha returning to his friends who are pretty shocked over the prospect that he got into a major battle. But Giorno actually ends up giving him a big pat on the back, which ends up taking away the anger of uh, Fugo at him at this moment. Fugo really comes across as kind of like the older brother of Narancha. That was shown in some of the previous episodes in the flashback and certainly right here, giving him a lot of business. But no, Giorno just reassures him that that was probably the best thing he could have done in that situation, and now that there's a possibility that the enemy knows where we are, we gotta get the fuck out of Dodge. However, before that happens, Bruno and his friends are actually contacted by the boss, and apparently when he talks with the Capos, he simply just sends them a message or an email of some kind, never talking on the phone or anything like that. They're trying to keep this guy as hidden as possible, and he tells their group that they're going to have to go to a location to find a key and a certain vehicle of some kind that is going to be instrumental in taking care of Trish and getting her away from all of this craziness. Honestly, my Admiral Akbar alarm is going off, and this is almost certainly a trap of some kind, but I'm interested to see if this truly is the boss who's actually communicating with them. So what's the rundown on this episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind, another great episode which focused on Narancha. I didn't expect that there were going to be three episodes dedicated to the guy, although to be fair, some of those were only a very small part of the episode. I have to say that both of these were pretty fantastic, if only for the fact that the action scenes and the battle moments in JoJo are always creative and you can almost never predict which is going to happen. I mean, the whole scene of him going up against the spider in a jar, I was getting freaked out. I'm, I'm not really a big fan of spiders they really do creep me out um and they're one of the few things that i almost have like a strong phobia against it's not like i'm gonna see a spider and run like a little bitch or anything but i don't want to be near them at all so that entire scene was just giving me an extreme amount of anxiety especially considering they're in such a small spot and uh what i really loved about it is that it was actually a really great action and fight scene watching the rancha like dodge these freaking like spider like arms coming after him and everything looked really fun and fluid and it was awesome how he actually uh, had like a piece of glass in his uh his shorts that he could just pull out and stab the spider in the head that was all just really awesome and yet it was all just a ruse leading up to the moment where he was revealing what he truly did and it was awesome that he was doing it while he was being devoured by a spider and being able to keep his cool i would have passed right the hell out it speaks for the absolute confidence of this character his entire backstory as well is very interesting as he's kind of like an abandoned puppy an abandoned kid that's been taken in by a group of people who has definitely changed his life and narancha didn't even have to join the mob he actually came from a very nice home but again money and a roof over your head doesn't always bring extreme happiness especially when you have a poor relationship with your parents and that was definitely highlighted with the relationship with his father even going as far as to completely abandoning him and his goal to become a gangster something that he just sort of does off screen and they explain real quick they could have had a whole nother episode dedicating to watching narancha go through the lighter test 
But in many ways, I'm kind of glad that they just sort of cut right to it because all of the backstories so far for JoJo have not outstayed their welcome and they've actually managed to be really interesting without getting me bored and making me like these characters even more. Narancho was one of my least favorite characters of the series initially. Now I see him in a completely different way and I can't wait to see more of his crazy antics. Again, why they decided to bring this guy into the city to cause all of this ruckus I think was a really bad idea. But hell, at least it led to three really awesome episodes, and the battle against Formaggio was pretty damn satisfying. It's got me even more excited to see what his uh, fellow assassins are actually going to be like as we go farther into this arc. I'm super pumped for this one. Stylistically, animation-wise, another fantastic-looking episode. The final scenes of watching Narancha have his uh, little showdown with Formaggio in the streets where they're on fire and they reverse the color, where the flames were all, like, really purple-looking. Like, everything about that was just so atmospheric and sucked me into that scene. I've said it before and I'll say it again, but the JoJo anime series' use of color is always used to highlight a lot of emotion and action, and it always does it in the best way possible and always makes it so memorable that it just sticks in your mind forever. And so far, Golden Wind has just been blowing me away with its quality, its storytelling, its characters, and its ability to embrace everything that JoJo is all about. Crazy, wacky, super androgynous action to the fucking max. Five out of five right here. You guys need to check out this episode. If any of you did, tell me what you thought about it in the comments section below and what you hope to see from the rest of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Golden Wind. Thank you all for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay down there, baby.